Hello everybody, welcome back. I know it has been a while since my last post and I really wanted to come back strong. This is going to be the first video out of a three video series covering Microsoft 365 post exploitation. Now, what does post exploitation mean? That basically just means you already have access or your initial foothold into the network or environment. So in this case, it would mean that you already have credentials to a Microsoft 365 account. Now, how would you get that? Well, we aren't gonna cover that totally in this video. I will say that there are times when you are working in offensive security where you will gain access to an account. This can usually be done through credential stuffing, password spraying, phishing campaign, campaign, or maybe you are a red team or a pen tester on an assumed compromise and the client has already given you a set of credentials that probably just operates like any other employee would at their company. Once you have those credentials, what can you actually do with them? And we're gonna answer that in this video. We will be using Graph Runner that was introduced at Wild West Hacking Fest in 2013. It was introduced by Bo Bullock, who is the primary author of the tool. And I will link the GitHub and another blog post in some of Bo's socials so that you can see that. I highly recommend looking through those resources. They're super valuable and Bo has a lot of other really great tools. In this video, we're covering how to get Graph Runner, how to uh, authenticate, and how to do some kind of just basic reconnaissance. And let's just jump right into it. So I already have the GitHub pulled up. This is going to be a PowerShell script. It's gonna be this graphrunner.ps1. You'll wanna download that and save it to your computer. So we will be working in PowerShell for this script. I already have it downloaded and to import the module into PowerShell, we're going to run the command import module and the file path where you have that script saved and enter. Once you import that module, you are gonna get this kind of cool graphic here. And the next step that we are gonna do is go ahead and authenticate. To authenticate, what you're gonna need to do is get graph tokens, enter. It will direct you to microsoft.com slash device login and you will get this little code over here to authenticate and get that device code. So here we go. Login, let me move this out of the way so I can actually see it and type it in. All right, and I'm already signed into the 365 account that I wanna use. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that account, continue, and then it'll say, all right, you can close this window. And when we bring back PowerShell, you should hopefully eventually here see, there we go, okay. <laughs> Gosh, that would be embarrassing if it didn't work. Okay, now you see at the bottom here, we do have this successful authentication and it says the access and refresh tokens have been stored in the global tokens variable. This is important because to send the authenticator request in the next follow-up commands, we will have to add that token variable to our commands. I always forget to do it though, so that'll be fun. Also, just a note that these tokens do expire. Keep that in mind. You might have to refresh that token when you are using this tool or using those tokens in general. For the reconnaissance portion, we have our authentication. We want to kind of learn more information about the account that we have access to. Maybe you don't really know about it. You Maybe you just kind of got lucky during a password spray and you're not entirely sure who this person is and what kind of permissions that you think they might or might not have. There's a couple Couple different commands that you can run in this instance. The first one, we're gonna just kind of get some basic baseline information. So we will run invoke and let me kind of get this up here. Actually, I'll clear it so you can see it from the top. So we're gonna run invoke graph recon, <laughs> as you can see. If you run that without the variable, you are going to get that message that basically says, hey, like we need the authentication. There we go. 
This is gonna spit out a lot of information. Not all of this will be super important to you, but there are some really cool pieces of information here. Under directory sync settings, you'll see initial domain and you'll see if the directory sync is enabled. Currently it's not. And then towards the bottom here, you'll also see this authorization policy info. So is the user account allowed to create app registrations? And is the account allowed to create security groups? These are two pieces of information that are gonna be important in the next videos as far as exploiting and persistence. Keep that in mind, both of these are turned to true and those are the default settings. Now, a lot of stuff with Microsoft security seems pretty permissive by default. You have to do a lot of fine tuning to kind of like reel that back in. We'll see that again with another module that we're gonna run, invoke, dump, caps. What this is, is caps are conditional access policies. And by default, these conditional access policies are basically all allow. You have to go in there and deny by way of like manually doing that. Again, using this policy, it's very permissive. It requires a lot of fine tuning, which is not great for the person that has to actually do that fine tuning, but it is great for an attacker, at least in this case. It's very exploitable in a lot of different ways or even just misconfigurations. So this caps dump here is going to show you these condition, conditional access policies. There's so many acronyms. The conditional access policies. And this is great to kind of get right away too in case you were to lose access to the account that you have. Maybe it becomes locked or the password gets changed. This can kind of give you an idea of maybe another way that you can get in. So like here we see this policy that says legacy auth allowed. Um, and then down here it says the display name is corporate network MFA bypass. MFA bypass is valuable when it comes to offensive security because a lot of times that MFA really is the last thing that can kind of stand in your way from having complete access. And so having a bypass option or kind of understanding how to do that bypass is very important when you start to maybe try and find another account that you can access. Now, speaking of finding another account that you could potentially access, we have a way to actually dump all of the AD users. That command is gonna be get Azure AD users tokens add that on the end here it's going to ask you for a name for the out file you can name this whatever you want i'm just going to say az ad users.txt enter and it spit out about 18 users that it discovered. If you do run this in an actual functioning production environment, you're probably gonna get a lot more than 18 users. So it is good to kind of save that into a text file to return to later if you need to run another password spray or you know just need to kind of look at the accounts that are available and active on that tenant. Moving on, we have the users, we have the caps, there are a couple other options that you have. You can look and see the security groups that you have access to. This can be done through get security and slash tokens. All right, here it just spits out a nice list and that also will save into a CSV file, which is fantastic. You can see what users are a part of which groups, the group ID. And if you are able to edit this or add users or remove users or add guest users, which is gonna be important later when we do talk about persistence, uh, it's great to kind of look and see what is available. You can also run the command get updatable groups. And this is gonna use kind of this like estimated access where it's going to try and see if you are allowed to do that without actually fully doing it. And this is really helpful in the event that you do want to, let's say, add an external user or a guest user into one of these teams or security groups. It's very helpful that you kind of already know what you will be able to do and you don't have to actually make any physical changes, you know, especially if there's any kind of like detection set up in 
those instances. The last command that we are going to run in this video is kind of one that I just think is a fun one to run in general. It is based off of a previous tool that Bo had created called Mail Sniper. It did work with Exchange or Outlook but there's a setting in Outlook that if it is changed, it can allow anybody who is in the organization to read that individual's mailbox. And you would think that like, who's changing this setting to allow that? It happens all the time. Uh, so it is very, very common for somebody to have this change in their settings. And so their mailbox will be open to you to go through and read. This can be helpful because not only do you now have access to one user's mailbox, which can potentially help you if you need to reset passwords and different things like that, but it also allows you to have access to many users in the organization's mailbox. And that's a great thing to have. So to be able to do that, we are gonna do invoke graph open inbox finder. The user list is what we already saved previously. So those 18 users. So I think it was azad users.txt. You can see here that it was checking the email addresses and success. It was able to find this one, which is us, uh, and it is readable, which makes sense that we could read our own mailbox. But if there are other individuals within that organization that have this feature turned on, you'll be able to read those as well. This is going to kind of cover the first video. There is a lot of information. There is a lot to be able to do with this tool. We are really kind of only scratching the surface and I know that Bo is continuously working on adding additional features to this tool. This is phenomenal. It's great. I love it. I think it's very convenient. It's easy to use and I'm really excited for the next videos when we're going to talk more about the exploitation side and then maintaining persistence within the environment. And yeah, all of the resources are going to be in the description. Thanks for checking out my video. Please subscribe if you would like to see more and I will see y'all in the next videos. Goodbye.